what's happening right now is that God authorizes and chooses certain people to do certain work. In Daniel 11, 14, for example, and this is a very good example, it says here, And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south, also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, but they shall fall. So what this is saying is that we are at the end of the earth right now. And all the rewards is already been procured without us knowing. We're all, we all have our rewards. God knows our hearts. He knows where, we are, where we're at. And what, what the Holy Spirit is showing is that there are different levels of maturity, of fellowship in the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. We're all at different levels. So, when, so, the faith, for example, faith and hope and the love in Christ through the Spirit of Jesus. John 4, 24 says that God is spirit and worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. That's extremely important. So faith, for example, we cannot just have faith automatically. Faith is something that is compounded in our lives as we increase in mature fellowship with Christ. Then that is added on to us. Uh, Jesus Christ said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto, unto you. We seek the kingdom constantly, daily. And then we're increased as we go. If we reject a certain area of where God wants us to be, then he's going to use that for something else. The reality is that that's not going to inherit eternal rewards. For example, clearly, building up Egypt in a time when God has decreed for the destruction of Egypt to come. And I'm merely stating the facts what the Bible is teaching. And, I, and, I, and I'm going to prove that in Scripture. I'm not just speaking. I am proving. Through the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Faith never stops until we are released into the universe with that reward. The level of that reward. Faith and hope and love, all three remain. But the greatest of these is the love of Jesus Christ. Unless the name Jesus Christ is used, there is no sale. No sale. Unless the name of Jesus Christ is invoked and used. Physically and spiritually. Jesus said a good tree cannot produce bad fruits. A bad tree cannot produce good fruits. Therefore, by their fruits you shall know who they are. In Ezekiel 30, verse 8 says, They shall know that I am the Lord when I have set a fire in Egypt, and when all her helpers shall be destroyed. God is speaking regarding the uh, spiritual um, reward um, being removed because that is the spiritual power of the inheritance. Because God is going one way, He has taken Egypt down and needs us to, to walk with Him in a certain way. So all those who are trying to build Egypt are working against the will of God. This is having the understanding of the times. This comes with being in fellowship with God himself. And it is not popular. It does not keep us in a high office because Jesus Christ said that the entire world is going to be deceived and the end will come uh, as in the days of Noah and also as in the days of Lot. It's going to come as a surprise. No one's going to know. 
Daniel 8 speaks regarding a very cunning, a very deceitful appearing uh, uh, of, the, of the end time of the beast system that is going to destroy the, the world, that, it's going to, that Babylon is going to fall and the sword is coming. And in these days, when these things are happening, like what just happened in France, this is exactly, it's in the Bible, I'm going to show, it, show that to you in the Bible, and, and this is where the pre-tribulation rapture is supposed to take place during these exact times. That's what the Holy Spirit revealed to me. So, you see, the sword is on the land. It's in the land. And the script is exactly, in the world, in reality, in what's happening, is exactly what the Bible is saying that it's going to happen. And once again, a no pre-tribulation rapture. And we've, we've just seen another example of this in the Paris, France, France in, uh, in um, attack by the, the army, the religious army of the king of Babylon, the religious army of the little horn, Satan, Lucifer, Satan, the devil itself, and all of, and, and its nation. Now, in Ezekiel, all our helpers here says in Ezekiel 30, verse 8, shall be destroyed. In verse 9 it says, in that day shall messengers go forth from me. And I just, and uh, the Holy Spirit puts in, put in my heart to say that the word of God is going to pierce the heart of humanity. We're all in the slaughter altar of God. The Word of God judges against all the works done in that slaughter altar. So the Word of God convicts all hearts in different areas, wherever that sin happens to be. And it does not spare. It, the Word of God has no favorites. We're all in the altar of God when you hear, when you receive something that that tries our, our hearts, that condemns our hearts, that is not from the messenger. That is from the Word of God. That is from God Himself. And verse 9 says, In that day shall messengers go forth from me in ships. Okay, that is the, is the, the temple of God. To make the careless Ethiopians afraid, and great pain shall come upon them as in the day of Egypt. For lo, it cometh. Thus says the Lord God, I will also make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and his people with him, the terrible of nations, shall be brought to destroy the land, and they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. Okay, this is what we saw also in France. In verse 12, it says, Now I will make the rivers dry and sell the land into the hand of the wicked. And I will make the land waste in all that is therein, by the hand of strangers, I, the Lord, have spoken it. Thus says the Lord God, I will also destroy the idols and will cause their images to cease out of Noph, and there shall be no more prince of the land of Egypt, and I will put a fear in the land of Egypt. This, this here is speaking regarding, I will destroy the idols. In verse 12 it says, I will make the rivers dry and sell the land in the hand of the wicked. So the wicked rule the land of Egypt. I will make the land a waste spiritually and all that is therein, everything that's in the land of Egypt by the hand of strangers. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Thus says the Lord, I will also destroy the idols. I will cause their images to cease out of Noph. 
This includes all of Egypt. This is old Egypt. Everything that is in Egypt is going to be destroyed. Everything that is attempting to raise up this the the um, the sale of Tyre, the Babylonian system, God is going to destroy forever in eternity. Because Egypt and Tyre makes up Babylon, and that is the Tower of Nimrod, the Tower of Babel. See, we're in a rebellion against God, and, and we're not, and we don't realize it. Once again, this brings us to Daniel eleven, fourteen. 14. There's a vision that, this involves a vision. God is using the people. Uh, the horns of Ephraim, the horns of uh, Manasseh, right? And God said, what else can I do? What else can I do in my vineyard that hasn't already been done? So God is using sin to bring in everlasting righteousness. However, once again, the sin does not inherit eternity. God is without sin. You see, so God has cornered the market. You see, God is the one who ultimately has cornered everything. That's where our salvation is. That's where our lives is. It's in the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. That's, so, so when this system crumbles, and it will, it's going to crumble extremely soon. It's already crumbling. And it's already done. It's just a matter of it going down from, from, from you know, wherever it is now to, to, to ground zero. Once it reaches that area, that, 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 that then, then says here, they'll know that I am the Lord. And I will make pathos desolate, and I will set fire in zone, and will execute judgments in no. And I will pour my fury upon sin, the strength of Egypt. And I will cut off the multitude of no. And I will set fire in Egypt. Sin shall have great pain. And no shall be rent asunder. And Noth shall have distress daily. In, in Ezekiel 30, 24, 25, and 26 says here, And I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, and I will put my sword in his hand. But I will break Pharaoh's arms, and he shall groan before him with groanings of a deadly wounded man. So here we have a, a more sovereign, we have the king of Babylon, who is breaking the arms of the Pharaoh, and he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. This is Ezekiel 28, 9 and 19. Okay, this is Pharaoh here, the sixth king. And he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. This transgression is compounding and becoming more and more and more. And it's all going into... One. One horn. In verse 25, But I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, and the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down, and they shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon. And he shall stretch it out upon the land of Egypt, and I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them among the countries, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Now, in Deuteronomy, thirty-one seventeen, reading out of the King James Version, 
Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them. So they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us? This is ground zero. When the judgment comes. And, and so we keep this in mind. That's what this is for. Keep this in mind. Last Wednesday I was ministering at this uh, the stampede is in Calgary and Kiss was in town and the Holy Spirit brought me there and right where the gates open up the Holy Spirit had me there and it started to rain and there was a lot of rain and the people started coming out it was it was dark and the masses they were just coming out and just flooding I've, I've never been in such a situation before in my entire life and well the Holy Spirit there was I was had me put my arm up. Someone gave me five dollars. I mean, it wasn't all, all bad. I, mean, I had someone push the cart to bike fell. I just asked him, you know, I just told him just to be at peace. And and there was there's always something that's happened. But there was a lot of people who were very edified. Also, some people came and I had um, one person gave me five dollars and I told him I didn't want it. I didn't want to accept it and. And he said, well, I said, go, just take it. And they, they, so I, so I, I, I took it. And that's going to be used for ministry. And uh, the Holy Spirit just had me ministering there. And I ended up, my hand was in the air. And I was getting high fives. I was telling them the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus Christ is near. Giving them the good news of the gospel. But also that there's only one way through the baptism of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. There's no other way that the kingdom will ever be brought in, that we can ever enter the, enter the kingdom of God ourselves, unless we are baptized in the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Uh, one of the songs that was played was War Machine. And I have the lyrics. I looked at the lyrics really quick, uh, briefly. And the lyrics say, say something like, uh, says, uh, going to strike down the one who leads me going to take it his place, uh, going to vindicate the human race, going to set the demons free and watch them fly. Armageddon is just a matter of time. During this time in ministry uh, near the end, and there was thousands and thousands, there must have been, I don't know how many, but there must have been 20,000 people or something like that. I, I was... I found myself in a situation where uh, it was overwhelming. I've never been in such a situation, in such deep waters. Uh, the gates opened up, it was raining, and I just stood there and they were coming. Uh, it was like in, there were both sides of me. There were so many people that they were off the sidewalk. And they were walking behind me also. And uh, it was just, it was something. It was, there was... Uh, one of the flags was taken. I got, I got it. I just uh, reached for it back and and just blessed the man, blessed him. And there was uh, just things like that happening. People, uh, they're uh, they're pleased. Other people were not pleased, obviously. Um, and the message was that the kingdom is coming. The kingdom is coming. God is bringing his kingdom in. It's coming. And this time, it's a time to rejoice. We're going to be set free from this system. So, a man came 
near the end, and he said that he was chosen by God to defeat Lucifer, Satan, the devil, that he was going to physically destroy the devil. So the Holy Spirit told him that the only way we can do that is through the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. That is the biblical. And, and this man, after that song, War Machine, the Holy Spirit put in my heart that it is a demonic, influence it is a uh, a demonic what it is it's it's a demonic um op opening it opens the gates for the demons to enter into people and they accept that, that uh of themselves and so the the it is a gateway the portal that comes into the souls of humanity and it's completely destroying humanity and it, it, it prophesizes also. So this is a, once again, the Bible says clearly that in that time, then they shall know that I am the Lord. Then they will know. The destruction has to come first for many in order for them to really see the reality of what is happening. And the scriptures are awesome. The Word of God is awesome because the Scriptures tell us exactly what is happening. It's good to study the Bible. Studying the Bible is really good because the Word of God is there. This is the letter, the physical Word of God. This doesn't save us. This is, this is the physical Word of God. However, with the Holy Spirit, when we study the Bible with a contrite heart and a broken spirit to truly endeavor the truth, to seek Jesus, the Bible will heal us. The words will heal us because we have a correspondence. God has given us that for our flesh. And our fleshly layer, we can understand the, the skimming of the first layer of the Bible. Jesus died for us. He's our propitiation. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. And when we receive that, we have the foundation of the salvation of God. Anyone can understand that. That's very simple. Or the more difficult things to understand, the deeper things are very, very difficult to understand. Only through that increase, only through that level of fellowship with the Holy Spirit will God reveal to us. That's why this is very important. And not to take, be taken lightly that there is a wonderful inheritance waiting for us. Not to take lightly the... the severity also of the judgment of God. That's in Romans 23. It says there or Romans 11, 23. To understand the loving kindness, the grace, the mercy that God abounds with. Also the severity of God. God is not compromising his judgment with anybody. That's not in 23. That is in verse 20, Romans 11. Uh, 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fell, severity, but toward these, toward thee, goodness, if you continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. So this is having to do with rewards. Now, In Ezekiel, I have here in Isaiah 29, 13. Is, is, um, speaks regarding what Jesus said. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Obeying commandments and precepts of men. They're being taught of men, not of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. So, uh, there's, I've been doing just a little bit of research regarding the fruits. And we have the good tree that produces good fruits and a bad tree that produces bad fruits. Okay? What I've been seeing, and I have photos and video 
of the brass and the silver and the gold of the world of Babylon in the streets. And, and, the, and, and the New Age ministry of chrysolite being exhibited also in the streets. Uh, this is a, a brain manipulation, a brainwashing, a, a manipulation invoking demonic spirits in the hearts and souls of men. And this was also started by a fellow named Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. This is my office. This is what I'm doing through the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. And this pastor, very popular pastor, if you read a, 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 a bit regarding this, this certain pastor, is the, was, it seems like the pioneer of the New Age movement, where, all, where our inner being connects with God and Jesus Christ is only just a small part of that redemption or uh, of, of our um, inheritance, our eternal being with the universe. This, that was the beginning of the uh, New Age movement. And those that acknowledged this person as being their pastor, such as uh, Mr. Donald Trump, are acknowledging an antichrist spirit in their lives. Once again, no sale for Jesus Christ. In Ezekiel 26, once again, this is not an attack. This is what the Bible says. This is the reality of life. In, in Ezekiel 26, 4, And they shall destroy the walls of Tyrus, Tyre and break down her towers. This is after Egypt's, the destruction of Egypt. Okay? God says, Behold, I'm against thee, O Tyre, and I will cause many nations to come upon thee. This is, the, this is the north and the east of Daniel 11. And the sea, and, and will cause many nations to come upon thee, as the sea causes its, his waves to come And this is what the rebuilding of Babylon is causing. The rebuilding of the Tower of Babel that has fallen. Job 14 says that though the mountain crumbles and the rock is removed from its place, that's where we are right now. God is closing the age. And God has purposed, God says in his word, who shall annul it? I'm trying to find this scripture. Here we are. Now, here we, there's scripture here that shows us regarding where the pre-tribulation rapture is supposed to take place. The pre-tribulation rapture, here it is. So here we are in, in Ezekiel 23. In Ezekiel 23, it says here, twenty-three Isaiah. Ezekiel 23. And they shall come against thee with chariots, wagons, and wheels, and with an assembly of people, which shall set against thee buckler and shield and helmet round about. 
and I will set judgment before them, and they shall judge thee according to their judgments. This is the sort of God, corporate and religious. And I will set my jealousy against thee, speaking regarding Aholibah, this is daughter Jerusalem, daughter of the first covenant of Moses. That is Christianity. All people in the covenant, all those who have gone, who have been selected to, be, to receive the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the foundation of Christ, all those who are in the salvation of, of, of Jesus Christ, in the covenant. This is the quarrel that God has with his covenant. Leviticus 26. I, uh, I think that's in Leviticus 26. And also Ephesians chapter 2. I will set my jealousy against thee, and they shall deal furiously with thee. They shall take away thy nose and thy ears, and thy remnant shall fall by the sword. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy, and thy residue shall be devoured by the fire. Okay, this is... Also, this is political, this is tolerant movement. All the things that we're seeing that's coming against the covenant of Jesus Christ, everything that you see, all the movements. Uh, the, in, in Daniel 11, 28, says that his heart is set against the holy covenant. That's what they're doing. They have to destroy the covenant of God. They destroy the covenant then they can take over. That's the job of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. I will set my jealousy. So here we are in verse 26. They shall also strip thee out of thy clothes and take away thy fair jewels. Okay, these are the garments. This is the uh, um, uh, the, uh, the the garment of Egypt. Okay. In verse 27 it says, Thus will I make thy lewdness to cease from thee, and thy whoredoms brought from the land of Egypt, so that thou shalt not lift up thine eyes unto them, nor remember Egypt any more. In verse 28 it says, For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, into the hand of them from whom thy mind is alienated. And they shall deal with thee hatefully, and shall take away thy... So here we have, in verse 28, between verse 28 and verse 29, this is where the pre-tribulation rapture is supposed to happen for Paris. This is where the pre-tribulation rapture is supposed to happen for all Christianity throughout the world, including the ones in Syria. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, into the hand of them from whom thy mind is alienated. And they shall deal with thee hatefully, and shall take away all thy labor. Okay, this is the plague of locusts that have come into the land. It's already happening. And shall leave thee naked and bare, and the nakedness of thy whoredoms shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. This is, whoredoms is speaking spiritually also. We're in the spiritual covenant of Christ, and this is idolatry against God. This is going against God, trying to rebuild the Tower of Babylon. I will do these things unto thee, because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen, and because thou art polluted with their idols. It says here, Thou hast walked in the way of thy sister. That's the first covenant. Okay. Verse 30, Because thou art polluted with their idols, thou hast walked in the way of thy sisters, therefore I will give her cup into thine hand. Thus says the Lord God, Thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup deep and large. Thou shalt be laughed to scorn and had in derision. It containeth much. Thou shalt be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of astonishment and desolation 
with the cup of thy sister Samaria. Okay, that is the altar of in Washington D.C., the altar of Samaria. That's in the uh, three three woes reports. This this is all. This just keeps going. In 23, in verse 10, it says, These discovered her nakedness. They discovered her nakedness and took her sons and her daughters. This is Walt Disney World. This is Charlie Chaplin. Nothing against Charlie Chaplin personally. Nothing against Shirley Temple as human beings. Okay, God loves them. He created them. God loves His creation. He loves the soul that He created. The Holy Spirit revealed to me that Charlie Chaplin should have been fired. Shirley Temple should have never been built. They discovered her nakedness. They took her sons and her daughters and slew her with the sword. And she became famous among women, Walt Disney World. For they had executed judgment upon her. What they did is they flooded the land of Jacob. They flooded the land of Ephraim. They flooded the land of Manasseh. They flooded the land of all Israel throughout the entire world, of Benjamin. With harlotries of the world, with the old ways of Babylon, with the gods of Babylon, with the pleasures of Babylon. With the, with the acts of, di of Babylon. And when her sister Aholabah, the second covenant, saw this, she was more corrupt in her inordinate love than she, and in her whoredoms more than her sister, more in her whoredoms. So, this is more than obvious and plain. In verse 43, in 23, says here, speaks regarding John 21. It says here, in Ezekiel 23, 43, says, Then I said unto her that was old in adulteries, Will they now commit whoredoms? with her, and she with them. This is the church. This is the, the maturity of where the church should be right now. So God is saying, we are at the ends of the earth. We are at the fullness of the transgression. Will they now commit whoredoms with her and she with them? Romans says that we're without excuse. God has given us His Word. God has given us His Son. God has given us His instructions. We're at the end now. So God is saying, He's saying, look, without me, this is what's happening. You're gone your own way. He, he's... He, Constantly telling the creation, showing the creation, through both covenants. Without Him, we can do absolutely nothing. Amos 6, 1 says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion, and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations, to whom the house of Israel came. That is, praying for them. Praying for the politicians. Praying for the kings. Praying for the chief of the nations. To whom the house of Israel came. It's not a personal vendetta. It's, it's not about hating the person. That's not what we're here to do. 
God says to hate the sin. Hate the sin. Love what is good. Hate what is false. Love what is good. But God is the one to condemn. God condemns. All we need to do is do our office. Do our parts. Through the, the, and the favor of God. To ask God for his favor in everything that we're doing. And let God be pleased in our work. Keeping in mind that, once again, God, the judgments are, 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 are it's a serious judgment. God says, woe to anyone who causes one of these little ones to stumble. Better that person have a millstone tied around his neck and be tossed into the sea than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So once again, unless the name of Jesus Christ is mentioned, there is no sale in the kingdom of God. So God bless you. I hope you're edified.